Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be taking a look at FC Barcelona vs Atletico Madrid. But before we get into that, please subscribe for more tactical content as this would help the channel a whole lot. In this video, we'll be taking a look mainly at the possession as well as some of the tactics in defense for FC Barcelona. Barcelona really fought to a hard deserved victory, but let's get right into the tactics. Barcelona looked to split their center backs on either side of the Stegen, but Atletico Madrid actually pressed high with Raul Felix slightly more advanced than Antoine Griezmann. This was to force Barcelona to play to one side. However, Griezmann's press could not be affected because Barcelona actually had a double pivot as well, so Barcelona could outnumber Atletico 2 on 1 in midfield. Pedri's positioning actually forced the midfielder for Atletico to not join the press, while at the same time Alejandro Balde was pinning back the wide midfielder so Frankie de Jong and uh, Andres Christensen was free to build up. Simeone tried to counter this by having a front three with the pressure, which actually worked and they could also have a three-man midfield which would cover Petri's positioning. Now they would actually have also the possibility of keeping narrow blocking all the passes into the midfield. But there's also the possibility of them actually pressing the back three high. So this could create a lot of problems and that actually did. But Frankie de Jong started dropping bits to side for Christensen and Pedri would take his positioning and actually cover and work around the press of Atletico Madrid while Alejandro Balde actually kept the width on the other side. Pedri's positioning was really a blessing in disguise for Barcelona as he could drop in between the lines and actually work the ball forward and his technical ability allowed him to link up with the likes of Gavi but not only could he link up with Gavi he could also get the ball forward within Ansofati and this is actually how Barcelona's goal came about but like I said that was because of the numerical advantage that Barcelona had in midfield and Diego, Diego Simeone soon realized this and he just tasked Felix and Griezmann to be in front of our double pivot to pin them back and actually focus on just restricting our playing to midfield. Gavi's positioning was also very very important for FC Barcelona and this is actually what enabled us to score the goal as everybody would actually start over from one side which drew the whole Atletico side to one side and actually Gavi's positioning he went up into the half space in order to draw the Atletico back line even further and leaving Ousmane Dembele in acres of space. Now this is how the goal came. Pedri was deep running from midfield in between the lines. Gavi Nero and he actually maneuvers the ball off of Jimenez and Ousmane Dembele is in acres of space where he scores the goal. And this is actually positional play from Xavi from the Tiki Taka era. The numerical advantage in midfield wasn't actually ideal for Atletico Madrid and covering our double pivots was not an ideal plan for them as well as one of the center backs could easily just dribble forward pulling them out of position and they could actually rotate the ball very easily as well. This is where Diego Simeone started playing what looked like a front six for Atletico Madrid where they would totally shut down the midfield and this is where Atletico started to control the game. They went in acres of space and closed down the lines and Pedri started to become less effective because they closed down the whole of the midfield. This six-man tactic of Diego Simeone created lots of problems for FC Barcelona. They controlled the midfield and they could counter-attack very easily. That's why Barcelona started to try and pull them to over to one side in order to everybody goes up and get them all to that side where they would actually look to switch the ball from Frankie de Jong into the likes of Jules Koundé where he would actually try to get Ousmane Dembele one-on-one -on -one situations as far as possible. But this wasn't working either because Barcelona wasn't so effective in that. Barcelona could only do that through one side. Oh. 
Because of Baldi's position, Atletico Madrid started now to target this left side of FC Barcelona because of his positioning. They also would target Christensen rather than Jules Kunde because he is less effective in defense, where they would get in behind him and try to actually cut off the ball to Griezmann or Drao Felix, and they actually had multiple shots on target like this. They would also try to drag Barcelona to one side, play through Drao Felix to get Yannick Carrasco in particular in those positions where he could cross. And this is where the problems in defense started for Barca. It's really surprising why Barcelona didn't concede any goals. Because the wide midfielders of Atletico Madrid kept on getting the ball in these regions creating 2 on ones versus Alejandro Balde. This is what ultimately lead in Barcelona having less of creativity and width on that left hand side. Only on the right hand side. This is where Xabi actually brought back his wide midfielders in order to create a 4-1-4-1. This is to not only press the double pivot but also to be able to keep a high line in order to rely on the speed of Alejandro Balde. Araujo and actually Jules Kunde. But in the end Barcelona go 3 points clear at the top as we discussed in the previous video. Real Madrid will drop some more points. This is a big step that we have taken in the way of the title race and this is a big step forward. I want you guys to please subscribe for more tactical content and I want to thank each and every one of you who have been watching this video for watching this video in particular and who has just been supporting me all, all year long. And do also not forget that we will now start to do a podcast form, short videos, not long videos and more episodes will be coming soon. We will just have discussions outside of tactical analysis. Please be on the watch out for that. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.